Right. We are back with Susan Reed. I'm Jerry Newton, and we're talking about an icing event. So um, your sister is in the Bermuda, taking off, flying in a spot that we automatically think is warm, and something is happening. And I'm going to turn it to you. What um, what happened, and then what are you actually read some of the, uh, her writings on this? Well, I do a lot of talks about my sister's flight, and there are a few sections where I like to read it from the book, because I think if you hear it in her words and picture yourself in the plane with her, you'll get a better appreciation of this flight around the world that yeah, she accomplished. Okay. As she was flying along in this one area going from Bermuda to Santa Maria, all of a sudden she realized the plane was slowing down and she was losing altitude. And so she checked the controls, could not figure out why. And suddenly she had a thought, ice. She'd heard about ice storms. Cessna 180s do not have de-icing equipment. But she got out her flashlight, turned it on the strut, leading strut, and saw the ice was building up on the strut. And if it was building up on the strut, it also would be building up on the, the wings themselves. She knew she had to go to a higher altitude to fly above the clouds to melt the ice. And she had to climb while she still could. So here's so where the story picks she up. she called the tower. Santa Maria, this is 1538 Charlie, over. A few seconds passed. I was ready to try again when an acknowledgement came over the loudspeaker. He must have been having a coffee break. November 1538 Charlie, this is Santa Maria Radio. Go ahead. Santa Maria, November 1538 Charlie has ice, wing ice. Request clearance to climb to flight level 110. I tried to speak slowly and distinctly so he could understand. November 1538 Charlie, please repeat. Santa Maria, November 1538 Charlie has ice. Request clearance to flight level 110. Repeat, ice, request flight level 110. November 1538, Charlie, Santa Maria, understand you have ice and requesting flight level 110. Is that affirmative? Affirmative, affirmative. 38, Charlie, please stand by one moment. I pushed in the throttle some more and swung the flashlight beam over the strut. Now the ice was thicker. How much? An inch? An inch and a half? How much could Charlie carry and still climb to 11,000? At any rate, a lot of the fuel had been burned off, at least 400 pounds of it. That should help to compensate for the weight of the ice. But ice can also change the shape of the airfoil and cause the plane to become uncontrollable. But hurry, hurry, Santa Maria. The one minute I was supposed to stand by dragged into several. I picked up the mic. Santa Maria, Santa Maria, November 1538, Charlie requests clearance to flight level 110. I have ice. 38 Charlie, this is Santa Maria, please stand by. Santa Maria, please hurry. I can't hold out a too much longer. I knew the controller was checking for planes and that also might be in that area of flying at 11,000 feet, but surely he must know that the plane couldn't stay indefinitely at 9,000 feet with ice, and if he didn't give me a new clearance, the plane would start down of its own accord. I looked at the struts again. There was at least twice as much ice as had been there when I first noticed it. If the controller didn't give me clearance soon, I would have to try to get above the clouds anyway, without permission, if necessary, while the plane could still climb. And finally, the controller did give her permission. An incredible story that's uh, here on pages 36, 7, and 8 that you just uh, read her actual words. She actually was having to figure out how to deal with a critical issue on the fly. That's right. She was in the air, the plane is getting heavier, laden down with ice, which makes it aerodynamically unstable. Mm -hmm. She had a couple options, and she had to determine quickly, and the person who was to give her the proper permission and approval was actually making the situation worse by not yet reacting. She had found a spot in her life at that moment where she had to make a critical decision. Was she going to comply with something that she was being told and wait and wait to her peril, or was she going to do something? In this case, and this happened just a few days later, but in this case, she finally got the clearance and her plane, Charlie was able to climb with his strong engine up above the clouds and the sun took that ice off yes and the stability was restored and she was able to continue. Right. We have things in our life that hit us where 
we think things are going good and we have a little indication we put a light on it and we see something's not quite right we may check with somebody else as to what to do but we still know something's not right there's a point in our life that we have to make a decision what are we going to do are we going to stay in the storm or are we going to fly above it and in this case she chose to get above the problem right. to get a, past the problem and correct it by flying above the clouds flying above the storm a great story in, of a life lesson uh, thank and you and then she had the same situation uh, on another flight same thing happened same thing happened and again she had to wait a long time for permission knowing that it was up to her she had to climb above those clouds yep and we should do the same shouldn't we yes yep so when we see that we're in a bad situation we need to recognize it quickly and find a way to get ourselves out of that um, sometimes it is with someone who can truly help as we've seen in other parts of the book other times the person themselves that individual has to make that decision in action thank you for that great story thank you